processing means efficiency in organization of data. The key is the punch card. From this roll of paper, the machine prints and cuts the cards. The size of the cards and the quality of the paper are rigorously controlled. The thickness is 0 0.007 inches. In this part of the machine, the paper feeds past the printing drum. Different card designs require different drums. Here the cutting edges separate the printed card. And this is the finished product. Since the efficiency of the processing machines depends largely on the accuracy of the card, frequent standard checks are made. The size is 7 and 3 eighths by 3 and 1 quarter inches and very little tolerance can be allowed. Cards come in various colors and color combinations. This is to differentiate solely for filing and such operations. Here, a sorter is separating the cards. Notice that they are stacked into piles of the same color. Separation has nothing to do with their color because the machine is color blind. Each card has been programmed or punched, the same for each color. The machine separates them only according to the punches made in the card. Some cards have a corner cut so that they can be lined up properly. The corner cut helps to keep the pile in order so that they will not be fed into the machine incorrectly. There are 80 columns across the card. Each is numbered and they are divided into 12 rows. The bottom row is the ninth and numbering up 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. Above this the 11 or X row and along the top the 12th row. This adds up to 12 times 80 columns, giving the card 960 possible different punching positions. The bottom row is the ninth, and thus this edge of the card is called the nine edge. Similarly, the top row is the twelfth and called the twelve edge. This distinction is made because cards are fed through most machines either nine or twelve edge first. The twelve and eleven rows are for zone punching only. The zero row may be used for digits or as a zone. Digits are recorded by holes punched into the digit punching positions of the card from zero to nine. For example, if we are to transfer 243,478 onto a card, the two would be punched in the first column, the four in the second column, a three in the third column, and so on through to the eight digit in the sixth column. To present each alphabetic character, a combination of two holes is needed. This is because the 26 letters in the alphabet cannot be accommodated in a single column of the card. This is where zoning principles are used. The 12 row is the zone punch used with the first nine letters, A to I. The other hole is punched according to the order of the letter. For instance, to indicate A, a column is punched in the 12 row, and further down, the 1 is punched. 
For B, the 12 and 2 are punched. The second set of nine letters, J to R, is indicated by making use of the 11 zone. The last eight letters, S to Z, use the zero zone. Here is the exception. S is punched zero and two. Thus ending with Z as zero and nine. Zoning is a simple organization, but to make it efficient, you must be able to quickly recognize the numerical values of each letter. The best way to learn this is to memorize. 11-4, 12-5, 11-4, The main divisions being A, J, and S. It's the same old alphabet with numerical values. Characters that are not alphabetical or numerical are called special characters. They are represented in various combinations and are set up according to the particular keyboards. The punch card acts both as a storage unit for information and to convey its data as it is introduced to the processing machines. We read the card with our eye by recognizing the various numbers. The machine reads the card by the punched holes. It uses a contact roller A and a brush B. In some machines, the card C passes between 80 such brushes and the contact roller. An electrical current is continuously supplied to the contact roller. And when a punch hole passes under the brush, the brush then makes contact with the roller thus completing the circuit. But when there is no punch hole, the card acts as an insulator between the charged contact roller and the wire brushes. Each impulse is timed so that the nine hole punch is differentiated from the eight, seven hole from the six, and so on. The impulse which is created when contact is made between two cards is of course ignored by the machine. If there are two punch holes in one column, two contacts are made, and each is timed differently. These timed impulses are then converted into the desired output, form, or function. The card must be organized to hold the data. Columns are broken into groups, and these groups are called fields. A field can be from one to all 80 columns, depending on the number of columns needed to contain the information to be recorded. For instance, an employer wishing to record just the employee's name, phone number, and employee number would divide the card into three major fields. The name field would be of necessity a larger one to make sure that even the longest surname can be accommodated. The telephone number would be consistently seven digits. And the field is set to that number. The employee's number field would be set at the potential growth of the company. If the company has 3,000 workers and is most unlikely to employ more than 9,999, then the field should be set with four columns only.
Often shortcuts or codes are used. A date would be coded into the numerical equivalent, needing six columns. Instead of the 6th of April, 1967, it would read 6467. In numeric, all columns must have punches, so zeros go before the 6 and 4. If the company evaluates employees' records and positions with a system using alphabetical characters, a great deal of information can be combined in just one column of the card. The grouping of columns of the card, just as on a ledger sheet, serves to organize the information. To design a card, the specific information to be recorded must be organized. For instance, let's take the student Louise Martin. What data should be kept on her? Her student number, surname, first name, and some statistics like sex, class number, phone number, and address. Because other students will also have cards, the format should be the same so all the information can be organized and standardized for quick recall of the data. This format is the order of the fields. The first field is for the card code. There will probably be other cards made up for Louise and we must be able to separate the cards. The student number field is set at five columns because the total issue of numbers might exceed 10,000. Next, her surname, Martin. 15 columns are allowed for this. And 10 columns for the first name. Again, this allowance is for longer names. Two abbreviations are used for sex, therefore, a one-column field will be enough for the M or F, the sex field. The class number consists of grade, course, and year, and needs a five-column field. Age can be limited to two columns. Phone numbers are seven digits. Twenty-five columns are set aside for the address. Here we have designed the card. Organized into fields, the card can now be punched to hold the information required. 